Welcome back everyone to Do You Know the Last Days of Europe, I'm your host, Novo Sobirsk Lover. But we must read a Siberian plan of our own. Bukurishkin and Langmak, as well as numerous faceless accountants, corporate leaders, and other bean counters had gathered together around a great table of polished wood long ago liberated from the Soviet High Command. Gentlemen, began Langmak. Uh, reading from a set of hastily scrawled notes that he clutched in his hands, we stand at a rare and opportune moment in history. Central Siberia we now rightly belongs to us. And with Siberia comes their vast resources. Until now, we have lacked infrastructure and heavy machinery to exploit them, but this has changed. Long Mach paused for a moment, allowing himself a breath and for the information to sink into the brains of those assembled. With our hold over Central Siberia and secured, we can now begin to collect what Mother Russia has seen fit to bless us with. Myself and President Pokrishkin have discussed at length a plan to see all of us enriched, both the state and the corporation. Swallowing Langmak added, Mr. President, I yield the floor to you. Thank you, Minister of Economics, began Pokrishkin. Siberia is laden with petrol, petrol, natural gas, gold, diamonds, iron, and coal. Billions and trillions of rubles worth of resources lie beneath the earth. I do not wish to mince words, so here's my proposal. We, the government, will subsidize all mining and extraction operations in exchange for a percentage of the materials to be negotiated on an individual basis. Together, we will transform the Federation from just another warlord state into an economic juggernaut and profit in the process. All I ask from you is your help. It was not long before voices were raised with an arousing affirmative. Let us put Bukharin to shame, the coming storm, and the frenzy push to reunify Siberia and to restore to its rightful dignity. A whisper has grown as the light has gained purchase, so too has our shadow festering upon the inherent cruelty of our actions. It has awaited for a moment to strike today. It emerged from the dark boldly, declaring, I was, I am, I will be. Workers across Central Siberian industrial zones have begun a massive coordinated general strike, setting continually poor conditions, unfulfilled promises, and unrepentant cruelty by the bosses. It appears the drive to return civilization to the Russian West has come with many drawbacks. As the lofty dreams of a united Russia has become less alluring when one cannot feed his family or keep all of his limbs intact, additionally, with the return of normalcy to the region, the worker himself seems to have become less valuable, simply a pawn towards the eventual goal. Already, work has ground to a halt, demands are being made, and old scores are being settled. While some in our government may be sympathetic to the cause of the strikers, it is undeniable that we cannot tolerate a crippled economy, especially considering the always precarious position of Russia. The strikers are numerous and militant. Unless we can come to some kind of deal and show our workers some tangible piece of the prosperity we promise, we must brace for the storm to come. Harrowing. Which I don't want to touch, which is not very good for us. So, goodbye. And... Oh, oh, we still have it for a few days. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we have a couple comments to go through as well. First of all, we can still buy our competition and other warlord states and such like that almost at any stage or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Snapping out the embers of the gun. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll try that. Maybe like over here. I might want to wait and see what these guys are going to be doing anyway. So two minutes looking pretty good. So if you like to read about caffeine flow, please go right ahead. But also, I think I spent a lot of our uh, army XP last time on making 38 combat with divisions. We would personally prefer 40, but the eye wall. The, con the severity of this general strike has expanded into two in into not entirely new dimensions. Following the lack of progress towards any kind of resolution and continuous violence, the workers have taken up arms. Raiding weapon stockpiles, looting old cellars, and outright ceilings become widespread as arms and ammo begin to be passed amongst militants. Already, workers are organizing themselves into general defense committees. This is an extremely dangerous situation, and the specter of uprising hangs in the air. We must tread more carefully than we ever have before, and while at the same time move quickly as possible to secure ourselves. If we do not act, this could end the entire thing. So they're going to strike up in Novosibirsk, which I think is a big issue for us, but not too bad. Alright, so that's the case. They're just surround the entire thing. We don't have a ton of divisions, as you can tell, but we've got enough. Especially with our guys being this thicky, smashing the barricades. The diesel engine of a tank whined fiercely as it raced against the makeshift barricade. The few workers still on top running in all directions as the vehicle charged down the city street. Dozens of well-placed shots from those behind the machine guns or machine preventing any sort of reaction. With a loud crash and hailstorm of scattered debris, the armored vehicle smashed through the barricade, soon followed by the men of the all-Siberian army. Rifles and machine guns spat fire in all directions, scattering those who remained, a ballad of chaos and death, a routine that the Corporal Ivanov knew all too familiar. Several, several, several dozen bodies already marked the dust and ru rubble, almost certain to be joined by more of the rebels as they fled in disarray. For all their talk, factory workers and technicians were no match for professional soldiers, and this fragment of Kostin's na naive rebellion was no different. Pretty good. And we should continue with appoint new governors or burning games. We'll do governors first because we want to reduce the administrative strain. Although the practice of appointed military governors of freshly conquered territories has served as well, it was always intended to be a temporary measure due to the fragile nature of the situation we are in. Now that we are in a more secure position, it is finally time to make good on our promise to remove them and appoint new ones in their place to aid the integration into the federation of the new lands as well as the restoration of stability, a stability and a reduction of popular unrest. Now, 
Uh, that kind of gets us into the next comment saying, uh, don't worry too much about consumer goods penalties because we have the Severian plan here, which is pretty good, minus 80% consumer goods. So, let's see, the Federation Victorious, that's very good, actually. General Strikes is not very good, but it doesn't really affect us too much. Uh, where's the overextended administration? This hurts our consumer goods, so we don't have to worry about it too much, but it does worry me about stability, supply consumption, and definitely political power. So, we want as much political power as possible. We only get 0.44 a day, so call for uprising comrades. Unlike the a-holes that run Siberia, I will not lie to you. The truth is so simple, I don't need any fancy language to explain it to you. It is a truth that any Russian child knows. There's something wrong with those that leave. You all know the kind of men I'm talking about. Those that promise safety, promise prosperity, promise... Oh, what don't they promise? They've been doing it since the, even before the Great Patriotic War. Now when our country lies in ruin and our people scrounge in the dirt, what action do our leaders take? They promise. I am, for one, sick of the promises, sick of the lies and the barbarism. So right here, right now, I'm going to be honest with you, I am not your leader, and I never intend to be. I am simply a man, as you are, who wishes to, for the cruelty to stop. We have an opportunity to forge a new Russia, one where each man is truly his equal. One without leaders, to get it, we ought to fight. However, these men of Central Siberia have nothing to lose. It is we who help keep production flowing, he, we, us who ensures their bullets, bread, and steel rise on time. In the name of all the dead children, and all the widows, and the crippled sons, to heck with their promises. Can you all just calm down? No. Not yet. They are both against Novosibirsk. The state of affairs in Novosibirsk and its surrounding territories has reached a breaking point, it seems, for the fires of revolution are now bursting in the region. Following our subsequent attempts to calm the striking workers of Novosibirsk, the aforementioned workers appear to have reached their limit and broken out in open revolt. Distressing news by itself, it is further compounded by the fact that the outlying territories around Novosibirsk and the city itself encompass major industrial capacity and a large population, an increasingly major threat to our new nation. This workers' revolt only continues to grow stronger every day. We must extinguish the flames of revolution before it becomes too late. Just when you thought the problem in Novosibirsk couldn't get any worse. Cool. And, uh, yeah, not bad. Okay, I thought I told you guys to move. Well, you guys got yourselves in circle. That's not good, but if you like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. That stuff is, uh, pretty darn nice to have. Excellent. Move straight on in if you can, please. Thank you very much. You guys actually go down there and help out. Take them out. Kill them all off. You know, the usual. Oh, Magadan has done quite well for itself. Vestiges of revolt. Reduces admin strain. Decreases early leanings towards collectivism by a small amount. The Secu Sovereign Security Act. Sensible concessions. Maintain the equilibrium. Active measures. All things in the Union. Enshrine the Silovic State. Reward our allies. Trust in the party of power. A nod to democracy. Hmm. Cool. A controlled political spectrum. Well, as much as I want to do that stuff, I guess we can do burning games. I want to rapidly improve academic base. So establish educational standards. How can we hope to cultivate a world-class economy when our people continue to go about their lives with an el without an education to speak of? To say that our education is in shambles would allude to the existence of such a system to begin with. In reality, any semblance of a proper schooling body fell into the abyss along with the rest of the Soviet Union over two decades ago. Let us finally up the groundwork for a proper education system. We should develop new curriculum guidelines for the classrooms to make sure that the students of the Federation are being taught in the ways of the modern world. Which is very good. Let's see... Agricultural production, mm, hard of the civilian industry, civilian politicians, cool. Just because, looking at this thing, we are extremely corporatist and federal. I, I'm not really sure like how to get severe in here or democracy or something like that. So we'll see. Got a cup of coffee here though. Let's see. Take folks of man. Uh, da, 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 da. Malice. Oh yeah, Titan really doesn't like us. Look at that. That's pretty bad. Uh, we might want to boost them up a little bit, as well as Fennec, which is not looking good as either. But that's okay. Try to take out Kimarobo, huh? Wait, where's the capital then? How are they not dead? Okay, there we go. Nice. Wow, this is looking really disgusting, not gonna lie. Very disgusting. Alright, well, head on back, guys. You guys did a good job. Pretty good job. Barado Barcelona's gun. And we need way more artillery now. Guns are actually still looking pretty darn good. We need more planes and stuff like that, but that's pretty normal. Guns are looking pretty darn good, so we'll go down to three of them. Share the wealth a little bit more. Uh, go down there, too, then. 
Oh, wait, where, where's... Oh, yeah, it's going up there. That's fine. Go down to one. Because we need to get more planes here, too. Oh, we can make, deploy more soldiers. Nice. Pretty good, my friends. And let's go with another one there. Artillery engineers are nice. Ooh, logistics. Yeah, we must go with logistics. I don't care about support equipment. Uh, we'll get it anyways. Throw some of this on there, too. I like I like using that, which is probably insane, but whatever. Crush agitators. Well, we probably don't need to see that anymore. I still like to do this, as you guys also mentioned, that we should keep doing that for us. So we did one on the economy side. I think we should go back to the other side and keep doing this stuff. So bread and games. Above all else, everyday people desire just two things. Bread to feed themselves with and games with which to entertain them. So long as these are provided and made easily sex accessible, there will be little cost or unhappiness and unrest amongst the people and therefore very little room for extremist organizations to grow and gain strength. While some sacrifices must be made to achieve this, they are more than worth the current and future stability of our state. Not bad. Cool. And we shall read, after that one, this one. Uh, supervised agricultural sector, actually. The land of Altay and your nobles of Beerus are incredibly fertile and almost being without compare in the region and a potentially invaluable asset to our plans. However, attempts to make use of this natural bounty are impeded by the great disarray and inefficiency present in our agricultural sector, a problem that we are increasingly forced to give our attention to prevent it from worsening. Fortunately for us, there's a simple solution to this, which is establishing firm and vigilant supervision of the whole sector, allowing us to streamline and organize it. Good. Uh, agricultural produ production would be nice. Uh, we can just oh, that is not good, but, ooh, poverty rate hurts us, yeah. Uh, encourage immigration, overextended administration, welfare programs, yes, please. Nice. The Federation of Paradise. It was early in the morning when Radio Re Free, Radio Free Siberia, oh, my, my apologies, uh, oh my goodness, come on, auto-saving. Programming change in the early, newly integrated territories. Many would not fully realize the change itself, but it had happened nonetheless, and it was permanent and all the same. Uh, the first, uh, the changes were subtle announcements focusing on the improvements of civilian supply, including foodstuffs, consumer goods, and the like, but they soon increased. Both in frequency and intensity, the advantages of a new administration over the former in terms of the goods delivery become an objective fact. This then progressed to clear statements of the superiority of the Federation itself. Of course, life was better now. Of course, employment options were better in number and in opportunity. Of course, the lands were safer and more secure for the average citizen. How could any aspect of existence not be more optimal? Most people claim to, to their friends and neighbors that they ignored the obvious propaganda, and to some extent they did. But the concepts constantly spouted were never further <clears throat> than earshot away, and over time they were internalized, just as the propagandists intended. A variant of the truth, at least, right? Surely, right? At least a little bit. Research abilities. Uh, I love the infrastructure. I don't want to use consumer goods factories yet. Uh, construction speed actually be really nice. I want to get a bonus for industry, though. I, expertise is probably the, we the weakest one out of everything we have. Maybe. But maybe the second weakest. But um, that bonus for industry. I, we, we have a lot to research. And I want to get more stability next, probably, as well. So we're doing that one. And then we'll be enshrined the Solific State. Sure. We must put forward the idea of a state built on the principles of national stabilization and strength above all else, and managed by military officers who have proven their competence. Effective and capable men are necessary to unite all of Russia under the Federation, and past failures of states such as SCSR, which thought of stability and security as secondary concerns have only proven further the necessity of the structure for the state's sake of peace. But I'm actually going to go and do this one first, because we want to reduce administrative strain. The scars of the workers' revolt still remain, and if nothing is done, they will soon continue to fester unabated. We must remind the working class of Siberia that no matter what their grievances may be with their administration, Administration, rebellion will not be tolerated. In addition to repairing the damage still left over from the fighting, we will restore order to the industrial sectors of the region and let any potential dissenters know that we are still in charge. Several methods have been proposed, and it will be ultimately up to our wise and noble president to decide which uh, would be the best course of action. Now, I don't think these corporations that we, you know, favor really, I'm not sure they're affected by this at all, like, like, corporatism, federal, collectivism, unitary, just because it doesn't seem like it's their place, but I could be wrong. Uh, even if these guys get taken out, do we still get to take them over? I wonder if we can take out two you men. Can we take out two you men? That'd be kind of cool. And actually, how they're probably more ideologically uh, for takeover. Only neighbors can be influenced, unfortunately. So I'm not exactly sure who's going to win here. It looks like the Divan, Divine Mandate of Siberia is actually going to win because they already lost oh, their namesake, Magadan. So, that's weird how it still popped up and opened. 11,000 versus none, 10 divisions. I'm going to assume the Divine Mandate is going to do well, so what if we did this? We're right here. What if we went over here and did this? Actually, who are they Who are they uh, led by? Phoenix? Wow, that's a lot. The Virgin Lands? Oh no, our Virgin Lands. 
But after this one, then we'll go and subsidize subsidies for mechanization. The Siberian peasantry has so long been utilizing awfully outdated methods and techniques, with some of them dating back to the time of the Tsars. This backwardness produces two worrying consequences for our federation. A low agriculture output and large swaths of our workforce being tied up in inefficient activities. We will mechanize our countryside. We will, with subsidies and loans, our farms will be able to afford the most modern machinery, rapidly increasing production and breaking a reliance on large numbers of manual laborers. Very good. Ah, uh, good. Civilian construction. Go, 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 go. Anything else here we really care about? Um, no, not really. I'm um, construction. I love, 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 love. Actually, you know what? Actually, I might get more stability right now. We get 3% more stability, or do we get 10% more stability? Because 35 days, weekly stability, that's 5 weeks, so 10% more stability. We're at 9%. Let's see how high we go up. We'll, we'll see. Because I we could really, really use more stability. So after this one, Angelico, cool. Overextended political administration. Uh, reconstruction efforts, that, that really sucks. So after this one, we'll go, then we'll go then enshrine the Slavic State, the Sovereign Security Act. Um, if you want to do, uh, I don't really know which one to do, that one, or implement small concessions. Increase the strength and loyalty to the, the, the populace. Less stability, more output, though. Um, as much as I want to do this one, because we don't care about these guys, we get a good national spirit, though. We go straight trade unions, though. But encryption is not bad. But I want to increase the loyalty of the populace. I think that'd be pretty darn good to do. Someone suggested that ironclad hand is necessary to prevent unrest amongst the labor, but they fail to realize that such methods would only inflame working man's anger even more. The last thing we need right now is to pour gasoline on the embers of the last disaster, so perhaps a different approach is needed. We should reach out to the prominent union leaders and labor activists to work out some sort of agreement that would be best for both parties. If successful, we would kill two birds with one stone. Our workers will have no reason to revolt against us, and our industry can finally achieve its past glory. All that remains is how to make the arrangements. Now, probably some of you guys would re recommend we do the other one it just is what it is i don't know uh, we might play noble spears several different times so and they don't have much power but i wouldn't mind more loyalty even though it doesn't really matter too much yeah maybe it doesn't really matter okay the other one then Okay, Sovereign Security Act. No preventative measures are too drastic when the safety of our people are, is on the line. Terrorists and will-be revolutionaries look behind every corner, and our current means of dealing with them simply is not sufficient any longer. A stronger, more iron-fisted approach is necessary. The Sovereign Security Act will be our savior in these dark times. Our counterinsurgency forces will enjoy increased funding and supplies to perform their duties with enhanced efficiency, while certain political liberties abused by our hidden foes will be cracked down upon. This is not likely to be a popular act with our people, but hopefully they will realize the necessity of such measures when our streets are safe again. Yeah, oh well, it is what it is. Get more PP. Cut. More construction. It's going to cost us a lot of money, but we're producing very nicely. Not nicely enough, though. Not enough. Oh, yes. But that helps us out, too. We're going to get the research speed. Yes, we did. That's good. Come down here. Come over here. Here. More output. Thank you. Industrialize, industrialize, industrialize. We could maintain the equilibrium, but I think we'll do a repurpose the Siberian plant. Let's do this one. Grass for research and development. We're never going to be able to stay ahead of our rivals when the entire Federation still uses technological methods that wouldn't look out of date 30 years ago. Unfortunately, having an advanced society is a bit more complicated than just waiting for skilled scientists and technicians to appear. To speed the process along, we shall strategically designate certain sectors within the nation to receive specialized grants to aid research and development. Once we grease the wheels a little bit, the next generation of scientists will be within our reach. Well tiled or tilled fields, happy endings. Constantine stared out to the fields of his farm, a gentle rocking sea of amber lit up by the cold morning sun. The boards of his porch creaked under his feet as he stepped to the railing, taking in a breath of the crisp air. Harvest season was almost upon him, and he could just about taste it in the wind as he watched his children running carefree through the acres of wheat, playing some game that only existed in the precious little minds. Constantine let a smile creep across his face, remembering when he and his family were nothing but another gr group of battered refugees. But things are different now, better. His children now smiled and laughed and will not have to worry about where the next meal would come from. The last fact that was very apparent is Constantine felt the telltale scent of a cook, of a cooking breakfast waft waved past his nose. They'd come so far they'd done it all again. They would have done it all again. The blessers and cuts on their hats after clearing acres of brambles, a racket of hammers striking nails, and biting uh, through wood when they rebuilt the house when were breakfast now sizzles under pan, the soreness in his arms after working for hours so in the fields. It was all worth it. For once he felt like he belonged somewhere. This is where he was meant to be, not by the grace of God, by his own will. Constantine had a home for his family, beautiful fields with their own bounty to harvest soon. And most of all, he would be able to watch his children play without a care in the world for the first time in ages. Bright sun, brighter futures. New technology, nothing to hide, nothing to fear. Uh, actually, we already went down the other one. We went this one. Nothing to hide, nothing to fear. 
As they did every night following supper, the family lived in a recently constructed house in the suburbs of Nova Sibiris gathered together to watch the evening programs on the TV. Tonight, an important announcement they had moved the national news to the front of the lineup, and the family, with the parents in particular, paid close attention. The government had the TV proclaimed whilst accompanied by patriotic pipes that had just passed the Sovereign Security Act in clear response to the many threats facing the state. The vastly expanded powers granted to the authorities by the act promised to decisively fight terrorist activity and protect the integrity of the Federation and its citizens. They promised peace and security and for all, and that should a good citizen have nothing to hide, they had nothing to fear. The family watched with this with great interest. The parents remembered well the chaos that had engulfed the central Siberian region years hence. The visceral fear that others, political, culture, and otherwise, would engulf them, overrun them, and take them the life they had worked so hard for, and they were so content. The act promised security, and security was desired. They knew they had nothing to fear, they were good citizens, and they, of course, had nothing to hide. Security for the Federation and for our children. Let's go back over here. Do we do this one? I think it was this one. Oh, it went down by quite a bit. That's not good. We can increase political power pressure, but I think by using command power for now, we should do okay. Hopefully by itself. Maintaining the equilib equilibrium. Takagi, good for you. For the first time in many months, our cities are finally returning to their pre-revolt uh, order orderliness. But there's still much work to be done. Did ghosts from the Unification War still haunt our new territories to this very day? And will they need to be excised if our Federation wishes to move forward into the bold new future? A heightened police presence will dissuade our new subjects from any foolish action, but a strong show of force is only half the battle. Meetings will be held across or held with the provincial governors and mayors across Siberia to discuss the best ways to finish the integration of these troubled lands with luck. We won't have to give too many concessions in the name of stability. Very, very good. Nice. We could speed it up a little bit more, but I'm gonna wait. Hey, 24%. That's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Well, I wonder how long the cooldown is, but that's okay. Oh, I just come, over, come back over here. Um, agriculture's not bad. Equipment's probably best to do. Even though I like that one, but it doesn't give you any societal development. Equipment. Actually, where are we on equipment? Rudimentary manufacturing lines. So we have at least two more levels to go up, so that's gonna take a while. Let's close that out so we can close out of this and come back to this. Cool. How one's a cooldown. But that's okay. Uh, let's see, repurpose the Siberian plan. Up until now, the Federation's industrial might has been built on the back of the Bukharan Siberian plan. While the Siberian plan was by, by far Bukharan's greatest achievement, it cannot be denied that the industrial base it was responsible for has been lagging behind in the march of progress. We should use the plan as a template with which to create a modern and improved plan in order to meet the needs of the modern industrial state. It will be up to the industrial theorists and brilliant minds of the Federation to build this new plan. But it is complete, our industrial might will be unassailable within Russia. Good. I wonder what's going to happen. Do we just take it from them? Maybe. I don't know, Magadon's looking to come back but tomorrow forever. Are you sure about this, Luca? His former colleague asked. Yes, Mikhail, do you have a better suggestion? No, I just, I never thought you were working for Titan. Neither did I, but don't give up hope. Just because the Republic fell doesn't mean we can't look to the future, eh? Mikhail seemed to consider it silently, finding some solace from the anxiety the whole team felt since Federation troops marched through Tomsk. Luca wished he believed his own words, but he couldn't. Oh, Indonesia's off on fire. Look at that. Very nice. After the surrender, he found himself alone with Mail, Artyom, and three other scientists working, looking to him for guidance. He was prepared to work with the command structure and led a small team on a single project, not making decisions for people that would shape the rest of their lives with any guidance. It wasn't what he wanted, it wasn't fair, and yet he was here. The worst part of it was, was the simplicity of the choice offered to them. They would work for the Titan, or they would not work at all. The sheer injustice of it drove Luca to tears sometimes, but there's simply nothing else. Titan bought out everything. There's no other way. Some, some, something died in him every time he told himself that perhaps it was for the best. It made it easier to look at his team members in the eye when he spoke to them. Luca looked to the rest of his team while Mikhail stared out to the window, in contemplation. They sat quietly, the usual lively discourse dead and gone, no more theories, no more arguments or idealism. Instead, their eyes revealed the same image as in Luca's heart, a lonely flame in the dark finally sputtering out. But, without the Republic, what are we even working for anymore? Mikhail asked, desperation once again in his voice. The same thing we've always been working towards, Luca said. His lip twisting into a lifeless smile as he repeated the motto of his soon-to-be employer, Progress. 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 And let me take your territory, please. Alright, so repurpose the Siberian plan. Active measures? Uh, let's do active measures. There are many ways one can influence the course of history to their liking. Some of these methods may appear small, but make big changes in the grand scheme of things. After all, if a ship changes its course only slightly, the destination shall be entirely different. In this instance, our destination is a strong and stable Russia. Our security forces are no stranger to manipulating the chain of events to suit our purposes. A few dishonest media campaigns here, a counterfeit document here or there. All our agents must do is pull a few hidden strings, and the minds of our people will be forever focused in a more suitable direction. After all, an ignorant citizen is a content citizen. Very good. And after this one, we will do promote national champions growth. I like the growth. 
The corporations of Phoenix, Sabir, and Titan are the engines that keep the Siberian Federation rolling. Without the considerable economic power at our side, it is likely that we wouldn't have been able to come as far as we have. They provide boundless op employment opportunities, unmatched industrial expertise, and most importantly, economic growth beyond our wildest dreams. Our national champions deserve a central role in the economy. This has been the case all along, of course, but it's time to take make this arrangement official. The Federation shall march forward with its loyal corporations as its greatest weapons. How's Barbie doing? Ooh, technology done. I forgot about technology. Love it. More organization? Thank you very much. I wonder when that was going to get done too. Boost, boost, cut. So much more cost, man. So many, so much cost. But it is what it is. All's that, all the news that, that's fit to shred. The article was fairly darning to the establishment. Ludmilla could see that. That's why no one else ever would. It was a shame, really. The article was truly an exceptional piece of journalism. Written with integrity and genuine passion, of course. No one would ever read it. And tragically, the journalist in question would have to be dealt with. Ludmilla had been an undercover with the paper for months now, being an unassuming and by the look books as possible. She interacted with her co-workers just enough to avoid suspicion, just enough for them to open up to her. This is how the article detailed in the book Krishkin backed corporate corruption and not-so-legal union-busting methods had come across her desk. Artyom was a good man, young and idealistic, ready to crusade against injustice with his typewriter and pen. Perhaps. The greatest shame was dealing with a young crusader. Once the article had been destroyed and with Artyom had made a tragic point of telling Ludmilla to be careful with it as he had no copies, Ludmilla would destroy him. The police were already in her pocket, already agreed to arrest Artyom on the charges she had fabricated involving the indecent images of questionable age another SB agent had left in his home. Whoa. A small price to pay for stability? Very good. Oh, that sucks. We gotta do it one more time. We should have it. We should have. We should have it. Good. And uh, nothing about poverty, which sucks, but that's okay. Uh, agriculture. We like agriculture here. After that, a special administrative zones. Our foes during the Unification Wars were a diverse bunch, if nothing else, from the mad monarchs of Kemerovo to the armchair philosophers and artists of Tomsk. They all had vastly different approaches to governing their lands, and bafflingly enough, most of them worked. Why change what is already working? As long as these regions remain loyal to us, there's no need to crack down on them. Special administrative zones have been established in these formerly hostile territories to continue the administrative methods of their previous owners, while still bringing them in line with their own ideals of governance. Any regions whose administration cannot be adapted, however, can always be granted through their friends, to our friends, in the industrial sector. Cool. And it looks like we're going to have quite a tough fight ahead of us. But that's okay. That is hopefully okay. Oh, come on. Yeah, we might need to do this one then. Cool. You know what? Give me the political power. Oh, wait. Ooh, oh, wait. It's a 10-day cooldown. That's kind of cool. Okay, that's good to know. And we want to do this one. Actually, what's this? The Riches of Siberia. Uh, that's not bad. Um, ooh, Yes. So, oh, actually, wow, look at that. That is not good. Divine. Are we not at 100%? Oh, happy 1966, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. 10 day cooldown. Give it a few more days, maybe. Oh, yeah, let's do this one first. That's fine. Resource extraction, might as well. Has it been 10 days? It might have been already been. Oh, Br Brigadier's coup of the Republic of Ireland. Okay, cool. There goes Onega. This is very weird. Hmm. Well, maybe we can't do it then. Expand the factory city. Novosibirsk is widely known as a factory city, an industrial linchpin that is sometimes regarded as more of a giant factory than a place where most people make their homes. Indeed, the city is the most industrialized in all of Siberia, and we see no reason why we should embrace this fact. With the help of our loyal national champions, Novosibirsk shall be expanded far beyond its current and already extensive capabilities. The city shall be the one that never rests, where the factories stretch beyond that which the eye can see, and work day and night to build a stronger, safer future for all of us. Good. Actually, this probably still can't do anything here, huh? Especially since they're still fighting each other, so... That'd be really nice to do this, but... Warlords, I guess it is what it is. Nostalgia. Rosa looked forlornly at the Phoenix building squatting in her beloved Kansk. The stinking hulk of dominated the street, all brand new took concrete and steel, a line of little ants stood in front, each clutching a job application. She wanted to hate them for forsaking anarchy, for selling their labor to a pittance for an invader. The same men and women who, only a short time ago, sang the old songs and praised Makhno and Krop Kuropat Kim. Now suddenly a way to enter into the capitalist machine, Rosa. Rosa felt tears swell up in her eyes, remembering the ways things used to be. She missed her red and black cap, her companions, and the joy they shared together in the building a future for all Russians. It wasn't supposed to be like this. 
Was the past so easily forgotten? She could, could she wake up day after day and pretend she was an outspoken anarchist? That's when she locked, locked eyes with him. Vavilov, once an organizer for the collective factor, stood in line of shame and a deadness permeating his gaze. The two anarchists had once been exceptional friends and companions in labor, but now here they were, staring at, at once another, at one another on the Kansk street they would never speak again. Rosa felt realized she had the same look in her eyes, the same agony and sense of betrayal of the self. She clutched her Fenix job application and shuffled towards forwards in line with the rest of them. Mother Anarchy would not recognize her sons. Oh boy. Oh boy. Actually, can you do this one? Oh, we can do this one too, huh? Magadon missions? I guess since they don't own it anymore, so. And they have no power here. It is what it is. I just want to take you over. Actually, and we don't even have Pavlodar here too, so. Kind of sucks. Really sucks, actually. Two minutes looking not too bad, though. Um, what do we have here? we do it. Academic base is fine. And then... And try on the Seal of Exate. Then we'll do that one next. Actually... Oh, actually, we'll do poverty rate. A mind to living standards. Economies exist to support states, and states in a turn exist to support the lives of the people that live under them. Our economy, state, our, our, and our state neither are exempt from these rules. As we continue our efforts to reunite Russia, our economy expands within with our borders, so too will our state have to make use of this expanded economy to improve the lives of its citizens. If we do not, we run the risk of inspiring a level of popular unrest we can't afford to have at such a critical moment. As such, we will devote more of our industrial output to the creation of various products that make the lives of consumers easier and more convenient. Good. And maybe they'll buy more products in the end. I don't know why I keep doing this. I just want to do this. I want to be able to just take them all over, but we can't. It sucks. Wow, okay, so I was wrong. Yeah, Magadon's definitely going to be winning here. Holy crud. Oh, we need more command power, too. Look at that. And then, we'll enshrine the Silvic State next. Ah, probably really. Thank goodness. Looking pretty good. Two, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Military construction, not bad either. Really focusing on industry right now. Establishing a consumer sector would not be bad. It's not extremely necessary right now, but it's not bad to have. Wow, our GDP is looking really good compared to our debt. Wowzes. Yeah, it's disappointing that we can't do anything about this. I just want to take it over. Of course, they don't even control it, so... There you go. You can do two men next, I guess. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, yeah, it's just a waste of command power. I can keep expanding that, huh? Cool. And then we'll do reward our allies. Promises are promises, and we've made quite a few of them to our corporate friends during our time of the crisis. Now that we are in less immediate danger, they expect these promises to be kept. And our government has always at least met expectations. So we shall grant them new and more generous contracts with the Federation to allow them to expand into and exploit the resources of the new territories under our control. This will make their past investments into our cause profitable and convince them that continued cooperation with us would be in their best interests. Increasing opposition. Vasily Shushkin was a problem as far as the Federation's central government was concerned. He was, furthermore, growing both in popularity and in activity, and this prompted a similarly growing concern against the Silovic elite. Oh boy. Actually, let's, let's do this first. Uh, although he was always considered a dissident, railing against, railing against increased centralization of the government from his maddeningly secure office within Banal, he had always been personally manageable. He had always been uh, of little relevance. His message had always been had been contained, and that was no longer the case. Under the Slovak dominated central government, there was always going to be many people who lost out, who did not reap the massive rewards that the battlers did, and while they may have not had have had individual power, there was a lot of them. They were now, along with others, now turning to Shushkin's public rallies, and slowly, but ever increasing numbers. Conflict seems inevitable. The only question that none can as of yet answer who is will at the end emerge victorious there's always malcontents under any system uh let's see so we want to decentralize a little bit more then that's fine higher foreign recruiting instructors good and i want to make sure we do this as well thank you very much train if you need to we need some more support equipment though artillery support equipment anti-tank you know all the normal stuff Pretty much all the very, 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 very normal stuff. I don't want to do this, but go and do that. That's fine. Cool. Goodbye, Poland. I guess you're going to do all that stuff. That's fine. I'll put you guys at the top, though. Cool. The large scale exercise is nice. Let's go and grab the infantry stuff. Good. So, just in the party of power. Um, 
That seems more at centralization. Decrease early instruments federalism. Unitarianism. Oh no, this is democracy. A nod to democracy. This is a nod. So if you're wondering about this one, please go right ahead. We're going to go with trust in the party of power. Hmm. A nod, trust in the party. Democracy has failed in the past. Oh, maybe not. Solidifying our control over the state apparatus, unlevers the control, centralize the powers of the federal government, and give the people what they want. Should they have even not this? Huh? Authoritarian democracy. Hold on. So we want Vasily Shushkin, right? Because you guys, overall, not everyone, but a huge portion of people will want Shushkin in power. So. I guess I'll actually do a nod to democracy. If so, if you want to read this one, please go right ahead, but a nod to democracy. Though it might be seem unwise to rely once more on a system that failed us all miserably, there's an argument to be made for allowing the masses a greater measure of democracy, mainly that it would serve to placate those hesitant to accept our government. This would take the form of minor concessions and reforms within the state, as well as opening more leadership positions to civilians and supporters of democra democratic power, of course. We would not go so far as to allow the people to have real power over us, but by appearing to scale back our control over them, they might be more eager to serve our purposes. So we want more federalism. Conservative democracy, right? More and more federalism. Even though we're, we're, we're quite federal already, so. <laughs> Go figure. Yep, I was definitely wrong about Magadan, and then there, wow. <clears throat> yeah, it'd be kind of cool. If we keep getting more influence, especially using our corporations, and when we take them over, would it be easier to core? I think that'd be kind of cool if that would, that would actually happen, so. Yeah, give it some more artillery. And after that, we will do what? To establish a consumer sector? Might as well, right? The effort to move industrial production towards the output of consumer goods has had the effect of showing the value of having a robust uh, consumer sector, which would add to our economic growth and make our people more prosperous. We've already secured the agreements of the national champions on this, allowing us to work freely, whether through subsidies or incentives or other methods, to encourage further output of consumer products and continue the development of this new sector of the economy. Very good. Oh, there goes the towels, too. One small step. And political thoughts. Eh, that's not bad, but that's not great. Developmental subsidies, I'd love to do that one, but, eh. In the city of Tomsk, a cheering crowd was gathered for the inauguration of Alexander Voznesensky as mayor, a small but important step to for forward for free and fair democracy in the Federation, after all. Voznesensky had once been a high-ranking Bastilliard, directing in their economic policy and thus helping to ensure the financial security of the Republic in its later days. The Republic was dead and gone now, though, and the Federation stood in its place. Deciding to make the best out of it, Voznesensky had joined forces with Shushkin, and stood as a candidate of liberty in the latest Tomsk mayoral elections, ultimately proving triumphant through his ideals. Now, he will govern one of the most important cities of the Federation, and aid Shushkin's cause further in order to return to this great city a sense a semblance of the freedom it had once enjoyed. Even as he waved to the crowd as he walked up to the steps of the stage from which he would be inaugurated and then gave his victory speech, he knew that this would be no easy task to accomplish. Fierce opposition awaited the lovers of democracy and at the highest levels of the current government. Then again, good men never did the right thing because it was easy. In freedom, men find truth. Ooh, yes. More industry, yes, please. Because when we hit 1970, that'll be important to get it done quickly. So, a controlled political spectrum. Although they have very little actual chance of taking power again, it is always wisest to not underestimate the ambitions of the extreme movements of the left and right in order to weaken them and therefore strengthen our government. We will play them against each other, distracting them with their petty ideological struggle while convincing the people of their dangerous and violent nature, thereby slowly reducing them to irrelevancy without us having to act openly against them. By doing so, we will take control of all politics in the Federation and keep the demagogues in check. We get more political power and have lower stability. So be it. Not bad. Developmental subsidies would be nice, like I said, but poverty. Poverty, 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 poverty. Our manpower is not looking very good now, is it? No, it's not. Very not good. But once we can hopefully uh, have all the Far East under us, it should help us out a little bit more. At this point, I think I'm just going to like rush down finishing all things in the Union. So, consulted Barnall's position. Levels of Beersk may be the administrative center of the Federation, but the adjacent city of Barnall is also an important linchpin in our nation. Its mayor, Vasily Shushkin, has quickly grown to be the second most powerful politician within the halls of power, and his particular views on how the state should be run have become pr more prominent as well. Unfortunately, Shushkin's rise has caused some rather predictable tensions with his main rival, President Pokrishkin. In order to put a stop to the bickering before it gets out of control, perhaps it would be prudent to reach out to Shushkin and see if he's willing to compromise in some sort of way. Nice. Yeah, what resources are we missing? Um, actually, let's go buy one. We could use this. We could immediately use this and use it very, very, very well. Not bad, not bad. Very good. 
The disunited opposition, the protest many would later greet, was doomed from the start. Former, uh, forming in Kimarobo and focused on opposition to the government's increasing tight, tight grip on what it considered acceptable political viewpoints, those organizing and subsequently participating in it hailed from a wide variety of backgrounds. They included provincial officials, workers, representatives, disaffected bureaucrats, activists of all types, and in several cases, old proponents for the fallen neo rural kids. Let's give them many great numbers, yes, but as it became increasingly evident, and he also made any form of unified, unified action near possible. Those protesters on the right word edges of the spectrum argued and clashed with those on the left. Both despised the weakness of those in the center, and those in the center reciprocated, refusing to pander to extremists of any fashion. The police had naturally been called out and had been the original intention of the government to disperse the protests, violently, if needed be, but as hours continued, it became clear that such would not be needed. Arguments among the protesters turned into fistfights, and before long, the protests collapsed entirely, dispersing soon after. Some of the most hardened protesters had to be arrested, of course, but it had overall been a victory won without much of an engagement. And many of the government hoped it was a sign of the increasing irrelevance of opposition in general. A bloodless, effortless victory. Typical. Politicians hmm, pitting people against each other. But then all things in union. The challenges may have seemed insurmountable at first, but at last we can say that with our administrative troubles are over. The last wounds of the workers' revolt have finally healed, while our new lands continue to adapt well to the Federation's laws. <clears throat> More importantly, however, it seems our political disagreements with Barn all have seen been at least been mended, at least for the time being. At last, President Pokrushkin is finally free to shape Siberia, however he sees fit. With all the moving parts of our nation working in harmonious unison once again, our Federation will be reforged into a nation of iron, worthy of claiming the mantle of the legitimate Russian government. Good. And what do we want to do here? Expertise. Yeah. Let's do that one. Because construction, while well, I love the construction stuff for now, um, <clears throat> we're only building infrastructure, which is important to build, but after that, there's not much to build until we take out the Siberian National Republic. Look at that. Actually, we come back over here. Ah, uh, we have no influence down there, basically, now. That sucks. Uh, Titan. Over, oh, is it up here? Titan. Oh, they love Titan. Yeah, they love... Yeah, that's not good for us, then. Kind of wish that this place would, like, uh, be, like, one giant sector instead of seeing all these mini-states again. I'd like to see one giant state. That'd be kind of nice. The people, two men, probably. Yeah, th yeah, we're ca we can't kind of do this anymore. That sucks. Uh, Titan's not very good for us, though. Hmm. It's all right. <clears throat> Putting the pressure on. Centralization, this is centralization. I cannot let it stand. Oh, but you will, and when it reaches the floor, it'll pass. Orders from the top. Seriously? Does no one, no one even remember what the word federation means anymore? These measures are blatant political moves, too. Dimitri, no one cares. Shut up. Take it to the floor, please. You know as much as I do that a single phone call can end your career. Today, Pokrushkin has prepared some measures to increase the pressure on Barnall, the center of Shushkin's power base, of course. They have to go through the Federation's legislative assembly, but with the sway that Pokrushkin holds and the web of influence that he and his clique has nurtured, despite the grumblings from Shushkin's goons, there's a good chance that her measures will go through, lessening the power of Barnall and her influence on the Federation. Let's get this done, then. So, can we knock it? Maybe I made a mistake. Can we knock it, uh, you know, Shushkin in? Hmm. Hmm. Barno resists. What are you saying to me, Ivan? Yes, yes. As Pokrushkin swallowed, a harsh sound fell over the receiver. I see what you're saying. Goodbye. Alexander Pokrushkin's anger betrayed his normally cynical exterior, but the ex-aviator did not lash out. He rarely ever did. One of his many confidants sat across from Pokrushkin's desk, his hands tented. I can assume that Ivan was a bear of bad news. The only response, a simple grimace, was enough to bring the confidant up to speed. I thought we had the numbers. I thought we had the names. Pokrushkin muttered as he stared out of his window onto the bustling streets of Novosibirsk. His mind calculated his options busily. A distant memory from long ago. A piece of offhand advice from the friend, flew it into his consciousness. Never make a decision angry. Words Pokrushkin tried hard to live by. Barnos won this round of the game. Pokrushkin's <clears throat> stated matter of factly, any trace of anger long gone, but the victory is still a fantasy. He might be getting more popular in an opposition circle, but that means nothing. There will be another battle, another war, and that time we'll make sure that there's no winning that for the dude of Barnall. His confident with little to say, not as succinctly. It was true Shushkin's name was whispered from the peripheries of the Duma. It seemed more and more every day, but Pokrushkin was in control. Look him tomorrow. Cool. Very cool propaganda. Not bad, but uh, we're still 53%. I think 53 is probably the highest we can get with all these negative modifiers, especially from poverty, flat taxes, two-year draft. That adds up to like already 35%, so that's pretty big. So, All things in union.
Not bad. The call. The economy boomed. The earth divested of its resources. Profits soured. Employment remained low. The people were happy. The military was strong, staffed by young, fit men eager for battle. The Central Siberian Federation stood as a beacon of civilization in the Russian waste, a true city to the hill, or on the hill, to the savages crowded around it. The air was calm. Peace had descended over the land. It was a lie. The peace, nothing but a symptom of what was to come. The air was calm, but it was charged, rippled, rippling with static. A storm loomed. Both and both Pokrushkin and Shushkin knew it, even if the people did not. They secreted themselves in a way in the fortresses with their servants, plotting the downfall of the other. This new struggle would not be over land and resources, but not some battle for the dead Russia. Armies would not clash in the streets. It would be a war of intrigue, of back-alley deals and political machinations. The Federation held its breath. The war for the heart of Siberia begins with consolidate the energy sector. Under the soil of Siberia, alas, a vast reserve of oil and natural gas, fuel, hydrocarbons, and the lifeblood of the modern age. Until now, these riches lay mostly unexplored, but they must end very soon. We must organize and consolidate the energy extraction industry, no longer to be left in the hands of small companies and adventurers. The nature of this business demands intense capital, and our government will grant that. With a guarantee of profit to our private partners and investors by the way of an established monopoly and government inputs, the Siberian energy sector will be genuinely efficient. Very good. Very, very good. Is there anything about... New no. anything about here? Re 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 no. Oh, we can be pre prepared for war beginning in '69. We're a little more than two years out, so we are doing things very well. Of course, the fight against these guys will not be easy, but most things, most good things, never are. And what do we want to do here? Construction speed. I want to do whatever it helps out with. I mean, that's not bad, really. But let's get advanced developmental subsidies next, I guess. That's fine. The riches of Siberia? Well, expand the All-Siberian Army. Although we have recently made great gains in our efforts towards reunification of Russia, we still control only a fraction of much work, and much work remains to be done to ensure the continued success of our armed forces. The first step is this, is to expand the army, making it larger, stronger, and deadlier than ever before, to the point where our enemies will crumble before it. Many other areas of the military need to be developed, but this is the simplest and easiest one. The soldiers of the Federation march ever onwards. If you'd like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. Very good. Better consumer goods, factory output, monthly population, recruitable population, all very, very good stuff. And we might as well grab advanced developmental subsidies, and we currently get 1.17 political power every day. Not bad. Go right ahead. More infrastructure, free infrastructure, at a cost, of course. Uh, let's see, our geopolitical future travel to the east. Uh, I kind of want to read that one next. Well, do we get any better stuff here yet? Severe war doctrine, the land doctrine, actually, that'd be really good to get. Lessons of the... Ooh, that's not bad. Armor technology, though, we're almost done with that. We might just go with that one and get more manpower. It's not much, but research facilities begin to improve. I kind of do, though. I want to go down our geopolitical future. With the Federation's position secure and Russia quickly stabilizing under our rule, we can begin looking outwards towards the world. Given the relatively non-ideological nature of our government, we find ourselves with great diplomatic opportunities. Japan and its sphere seem happy to deal with us and our corporations, as does the U.S., which has even indicated it would support us in the conflict between us and Germany. The Federation's future is still uncertain, but if we can secure allies to help defend us and trade agreements to reinforce our economy, there will be nothing we can't do. In the army again, Fyodor hastened to strap on his boots as he was, uh, the call was sounded. He was still exhausted from the drills of the previous day. His bones ached, his mind still fogged with sleep. The sergeant clanged a bell so loud it hurt Fyodor's eye, ears and eyes, maybe. Move it, worms, you worthless sacks of crap aren't worth being in my beloved army. Do the field now. Fyodor's old sergeant in Tomsk wasn't nearly as boisterous, preferring rousing speeches against, about the defense of democracy against the hordes of the wasteland. This army was different. This army knew there was a big dog in Siberia and the woe betide any who claimed otherwise. Offensive war versus defensive war, supposed Fyodor. The men ran, performing live fire drills, and sparred all the while enduring the relentless abuse of the sergeant. Despite his former service in the army of Tomsk, Fyodor could have sworn the boot camp he was put through in that former nation was far less strenuous. In this new army, his body was hardened just as his mind was broken and reshaped into soldier of the Federation. As he lay exhausted and his cot that night, brain barely able to form coherent thoughts about the constant fatigue, he briefly pondered the irony that led him here. Once a defender of democracy, Fyodor was now in service too, well, a slightly different form of democracy. He supposed he could live with that. Just to think of it as a change in uniform. Nice. And then we'll do incorporate new territorial armies. Many of the lands conquered by the Federation fielded impressive armies when they still had their independence, even if they weren't so impressive as to be able to prevent defeat and annexation by us. It'd be wise to incorporate the best of these forces into our military, growing it significantly and allowing us to have them fight those that we face next. Though we must be cautious, though that our armed forces do not become infested with extremists, we can also afford to be too picky in times of chaotic times. Yeah, cannot be too picky. I should really focus more on my military. And guns. Yeah, we were kind of neglected. I kind of neglected our guns. This is so disappointing. I just want to have more influence, but we can't get more influence. So sad. Cut and spend. We're, it keeps going up. Cost keeps going up. I don't like that. But it is what it is. Cost doesn't really matter too much. Growth isn't looking too bad, though. Alright, what do we have here? Heavy machinery? Nice. 
Slashing of Titans? Sir, there's some concern about the steady escalation of debates surrounding our state's foreign policy. The president looked up from the papers as the ages handed him. <clears throat> what possibly could be so dangerous about foreign policy? Specifically, the concerns are pointed at Phoenix and Sibir, as you know. Yes, yes, the backbones of our weapons in agricultural industries. I'm fully aware of what these corporations do around here. All right, then, well. The two corporations both desire different trading partners. Phoenix supports diplomacy of the old Fen in America. The U.S. is cutting edge technology and has no reason to fear that their supplies might be used against them. They don't believe the Japanese would be nearly as willing to negotiate arms deals. Meanwhile, Sapir wants to trade primarily the sphere. They believe the sphere can provide unique opportunities that America can simply never provide. This wouldn't be as much a problem for our economy as if the two corporations were trying so hard to get their hands on, or get dissuade us to their sides. They're bribing every politician that can get their hands on. And there are even some allegations that the two corporations are trying to sabotage each other. If this matter isn't resolved, their stocks could fall and bring their economy down with them. But Krushkin could do nothing more than sigh. He looked back up at the aid, and I'll look into this. Just get some people on damage control. Why can't they just play nice? You know? Um, increase the strength of Sabir. Yeah, we'll probably go with Sabir since, uh, you know, they want that group. Guns. Yeah, so we're still using 1960 stuff. That's so bad. Uh, incorporate new territorial armies. That's good. All right. What do we have here? Phoenix. Sabotage Phoenix. Increases the loyalty of Sabir. Decreases the strength of Phoenix. Eh, we probably actually want to do that one. Sabir. Sabotage them. Yeah, we've done this one quite well. So well enough. That we can kind of ignore it for now. Since we are waiting for more stuff to happen. So, What is that? Wheat imports to Tokyo. Marley raises the Sphere trade. Increased trade with Sabir. I kind of like that one. Let's try that one. Mass farming in Korea. Do some manpower. Moderate, Marley. Mm, I don't lose manpower, so. Cool. Let's try that one. Followed up with uh, lessons of unification. War. That's great and all. I love the arm XP, but we already have most of the strategic theory and dumb done, and I'd rather get a bonus for our, um, tanks. Even though we don't have tanks, I would still be able to like try to use them at least against a WRF. Fighting across nearly the entire breadth of Siberia taught us much in the ways of fighting Siberian warfare. We came up against many forces, unique in their doctrines and methods of warfare, and though we did eventually come out victorious, there were certainly instances in which forces, even smaller than our own, managed to inflict heavy losses on us, and even eke out a few small tactical victories. We should seek to incorporate, incorporate these practices and doctrines that our fallen foes utilize, so that we might further professionalize our fighting force, we can only become stronger for it, which is a good thing. Why well, under the bridge, Mr. President, as we begin the integration of the armed forces of former warlord states, a pressing matter has arisen. Prisoners of war that held officer rank within their now defunct militaries are requesting that I release them from prison and grant them commissions. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to refuse such a request, but I have seen it to fit past their desires up to your office. The return of prisoners of war becomes a difficult proposition. When the country they were captured from no longer exists. Additionally, these officers, including some of our senior rank, could provide invaluable military expertise to our own armed forces. I have my own personal concerns with this request, as a pardoning of these re those responsible for waging war against our nation sets a pres dangerous standard. What we don't need is Narodnex claiming legal precedent for, the, our own, for their own pardons. Naturally, the choice is yours, and I will be waiting your reply. Signed, Dmitry Glinka, Minister of Defense. Pardon them all, but no commissions. Pardon those of senior rank and grant them commissions. No pardons and no commissions. Hmm, kind of want more stability, but I don't want to lose political power. I want some more political power, so. No pardons, no commissions, so be it. Import wheats. Adds a million dollars to the debt, that's fine. Increase OFN influence, I'd love to do that, but it's alright. You know, actually, we can probably do both. Sphere, oh, the OFN has quite a bit of influence on us. Sabotage Phoenix. Decrease the strength of Phoenix by a small amount. How strong is Phoenix right now? Um, Loyalty's pretty low. Power's not very high. If we could do, dismantle their power, that'd be really good, actually. So, maybe we'll sabotage them. Sabotage severe? Nope. Decrease severe influence. Increase severe influence. Slightly raise it, and then increase the strength of severe. Eh, I think I want to wait for this one. Reverse, revise the training. Oh yes, revise the training programs. Having incorporated many armies' uh, doctrines and many armies themselves into our military, we've discovered that many inadequacies in our training regiments and our army induction process as a whole. It would do well for us to rebuild our training corps so that we might start putting out more professional soldiers as we move away from the mercenary type training we used before, utilizing the doctrines and procedures we have adopted from these other subjugated warlords. Hopefully, this will allow us to improve our army's long-term effectiveness. If you like, ooh, the sons the underground sons of dot underground. Where there is censorship of ideas, it is inevitable that an underground press will rise up in protest. This is no less true in Nova Sibiris, the heart of the CSF. They call it Samizdat, and it faces are many. From anti-government screeds to suppress poetry, all find themselves at home in the uh, Samizdat. 
Yevgeny Karatonov was just one space of such sumsy dot, laboring away at his typewriter, his fingers striking the keys with a mechanical precision. It was the start of something new, something not quite ready yet, but shining with brilliant potential. The Enchanted Island, as he called it, a play he knew we would not ever see mainstream publication. After all, no conservative regime would allow a homosexual to publish regardless of the content. So here, in the Samzis dot, Karatonov wrote, hoping that the underground theater scene would find it pleasing. Perhaps in another decade, Karatonov could walk as he wa was, was and publish uh, at what he pleaded, but not today. He, he, he slid the platen back into place as it rang and continued to attack. One day, all of Russia will read your works. All right, and we could, I don't, I don't want to lose manpower. We cannot afford to use that. We can raise, you can lose money, which is fine with me, but still. 15. OFN trade is going up really here. One year before we pick it aside, failing to pick which one will become, failing to pick one will be an academic disaster. Oh boy. We need more political power. So after this one, I wanted to research facility stuff. This is nice and all. We chose Japan. Travel to the east. Let's do that one. Russia has, at this point, has had a dis decently long history with Japan, and much of it isn't good. Despite that, Japan remains one of the globe's foremost superpowers, and its influence, much like Germany's or the United States, stretches far across the globe. It would be foolish of us to not open diplomatic ties with the sphere and start working on improving our relations. Besides, history needed to dictate the future. If it so happens that our government and economic setups are like rather alike, and cooperation between our two nations could bring us about the great prosperity. Let's see if we can make that happen. Nice. Um... Uh, 25-25 is pretty good. Reunification of Russia, so good away. Nothing over there. That's good. Good, good, good. And we could sabotage Phoenix, which I kind of don't mind. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that one. This, how strong are Phoenix now? Nine. And their loyalty is nine. Their power is very bad, too, so. No, you have no power in these realms. Nice. Travel to the east, and then the Siberian air fleet. Oh, Uncle Vasily's Vasily's troops. In the time that had passed since Vasily Margalov had begun first inspecting the airborne forces of the Federation, so much had changed right before the general's own eyes. Now the same troops he had seen at first were in shape and had the latest equipment and obeyed every command without question. For skilled instruction, some of them had even taken to calling him Uncle Vasya, and just thinking about that almost brought tears to his eyes. They had formed into fine soldiers for whom producing criticism was difficult. But more importantly, a strong sense of camaraderie had formed among them, and once where they had seemed close to apathetic about their roles within the military of the Federation, they now helped each other fulfill their respective eagerness with a sort of eagerness that Margalov hadn't seen in a long, long time. Given time, this stood a real chance of becoming the best soldiers Margalov had ever had the pleasure of working with. For now, however, there's still work to be done, and so he returned to instruct them, trying to wipe the proud smile off the face, and only partially succeeding. If any of his men noticed the admiring look in his eyes, they didn't say a word. Uncle Vasya had many nephews. The Siberian Air Fleet. Oh, missing mission store neighbors. Oh, let's do that one. I want more political power. Though we might seek allies abroad, it would be unwise to neglect these states neighboring us, allowing our relationships with them to deteriorate. Those include the Kazakhs, their future long since tied to that of Russia, the Chinese, once our rivals in the East, and now promising opportunity, and the Mongols caught between us and the sphere. Until Russia is reunited, conflict with outside states is one of the lasting things we can afford. Additionally, much of our economy depends on trade with our neighbors, and we must avoid lost profit where we can. It's all about that money. Money, 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 money. And what can we do here? 25-25, not bad. Make a corp infighting. Picking a trade partner on the preparations for departure. And hop it down here. Ooh, I'd love to do more of this stuff. To all members of the Federal Diplomatic Corps regarding forthcoming departures and assignments. At the direction of the central government, the Federal Federal Diplomatic Corps has been instructed to prepare, in general and among all departments, for the immediate reassignment and con of considerable numbers of personnel to alternative domestic and foreign postings. Overtures on the part of the Federation members uh, of the Organization of Free Nations, as well as both the Empire of Japan and states within its sphere of influence, have been made. It is expected that responsibilities, um, <clears throat> oh, that responses to these overtures will, in the immediate future, necessitate the establishment of foreign bureaus for the purpose of direct relations, as well as facilitation of trade. The Corps expects many any personnel to assigned, so assigned to such first foreign bureau, bureaus to keep in mind the geopolitical position of the nations in which they operate, both in relation to the Federation and in relation to other in international alliances, until such time as an instruction is, is, is received as to the direction of the Federation's international political associations, no favoritism of any kind is to be displayed. If you or your colleagues have any concerns, do not hesitate to direct them to your immediate super, superior. <clears throat> the core will return and reply as quickly as possible. Keep the good of the Federation in mind, as always. For partnership in China? Oh, that's kind of cool. 
also include partnerships in China. In spite of domination and exploitation by the Japanese, China has remained a truly uh, market, large market, with relative ease and largely secure investments, and it only continues to grow as time passes. <clears throat> Though their ability to act on their own is limited, we will reach out to them within the boundaries that they possess under the watchful eye of the sphere, and for forge economic and strategic partnerships of whatever extent we can to strengthen both parties and allow us greater access to and influence in the markets of East Asia. Good. <clears throat> A civil discussion. Within a smoke-filled boardroom in Novo Sibirsk, executives from Sibir and Phoenix sat and talked about the direction of the Federation's foreign policy. The men were dressed in the finest suits and smoked the finest imported cigars. A man from Sibir spoke up. It seems clear to me that we should open up closer ties to the Japanese. We can leverage that influence of the Zaibatsu and increase our own influence in the Japanese markets. Are you serious? The Japanese markets are dominated by the Zaibatsu. We would be operating at a loss for years. It's too risky. We would be much better off breaking into the American markets, an executive from Phoenix insisted. Perhaps we might look to the former triumvirate. The economic chaos they have been recently experienced could be a perfect time for us to strike. They are truly untapped markets that are hungry for new investments, yet another Phoenix man put forward. All of you seem to be ignoring a large source of potential profit. The Reich may have been ravaged by a civil war, but it's still a very rich market. As the man from Sabir stopped speaking, the boardroom fell completely silent. All around the table, the other executives looked at him with aghast expressions. Are you insane? The Germans, the Deutsche Volk? Those dudes would sooner kill us than do business with us. What kind of BS have you Sabir boys been drinking? The Reich is off the table, period. After the boardroom descended into raised voices of just short of shouting, board members wagged, wagged their cigars at each other and hurled insults. By the end of the meeting, tensions had reached their highest point, and only the break for lunch had prevented the room from descending into complete chaos. Business as usual, though. Mm. Yes. Decrease the loyalty by a large amount. That's okay. Power is very low. Loyalty is very low, which is pretty good. He's going to have no, lo no uh, power, though, which is good. Good. Even though this, one, this stuff is next, so we don't want to forget about that stuff. Uh, we'll do partnerships with China next as well. I'd probably do connections with Mongolia and the Kazakh consulate, so we'll see. And then we'll do this stuff probably last. Even though, even though it's probably not great, it is what it is. Nice. Mission to our neighbors. Cool. Agriculture. Education. Thank you very much. 35 versus 25. Good, good, good. A Kazakh consulate. For centuries, the futures of Kazakhstan and Russia have been inextricably linked. The present is no different. Much like us, the Kazakhs have suffered tremendously from warlordism, banditry, and abject poverty. However, just as they have overcome these difficulties as we did, and are beginning to recover, the, they are beginning to recover their past greatness. We should immediately dispatch on an emissary to reach out to them in order to establish formal relations and celebrate the beginning of the end of our shared tribulations. Not bad. Wait, we can build ports in Australia. Well, that's kind of cool. Greatly lower trade sphere influence, but in America, that's actually really kind of cool. Uh, wheat imports, of course, with Tokyo neutrals, Phoenix. That's not bad. Pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. And now we're done with the land auction. Oh, oh, we're done with our civvies. Yeah, I don't think so. No, 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 no. You are not done building. By God's good graces, you are not done building. But Kazakh consulate. Did we get anything from that? Maybe some sort of event to read, maybe? Maybe not? Okay. Pirate Relief is next, no matter what happens. And then connections with Mongolia. Caught between two worlds, one that of a rising sun beginning to set, and the other a Russian bear coming out of hibernation to avenge its humiliation, the Mongols must align with one or the other to protect themselves in an increasingly restless Asia. Obviously, it would be in our best interest to make sure every effort to, is to convince them of the benefits of aligning with us. We will initiate talks to improve our relationship with them, securing our trade in the region, and ensuring a stable buffer state against a sphere for the time being. Which is probably a really good idea. Poverty, though. Thank you. Anything else here? Nope. It looks all pretty good. Eh, except now we have hiring foreign instructors. 40. The OFN really wants us to go with them. Holy crud. And after that, let us read about the Siberian Air Fleet. The air forces of the Federation have always been one of its greatest advantages, soaring above to rain fiery death upon those of our enemies unlucky enough to be below them and shooting down any foolish enough to try and oppose them in the air. However, it is becoming clear that it is growing severely outdated, and the planes are little more than toys in comparison to those fielded by many modern states. We must begin work immediately to modernize and improve our air fleet and close the technological gap of our proudest military branch. That probably would be a good thing to do. Quite a good thing. Wow, we were running out of manpower. We only have 15 divisions, though. How many divisions do these guys have? Up to 17. Now, they have a lot more different types of divisions, and our guys are literally 40 combat with. Makovsky actually won. Look at that. Bunch of fascists. Um, let's keep going this. I want to get, like, that stuff. 
So we can actually start producing that stuff. That'd be pretty good, probably. 50, 60? My goodness. My goodness. Nice. Alright. Substrate routes in Kazakhstan. And fighting will equalize influence slower. Exports is to China. We lose political power on consumer goods. We get... Oh, 90 more. Oh, heck yeah. Who cares about that? I can do that one. Expand the steeps. Hurt ourselves a little bit more. Give me that political power. Use connections. Give me more political power. Nice. Because we need to really hurt these guys here. Oh, we, oh, we're out of manpower. Oh, crap. That's not good. Um, You know, we're going to keep it for now. Because once the war starts here, or we can start you know, trying to fight each other, then uh, then we can uh, beat each other. Then get some more manpower that way. Hire foreign instructors first, though. And then probably do scientific research facilities and stuff. That'd be good. And then inspect Japanese jets. The Empire of Japan shares plenty of the blame with the Nazis for the fall of the old Union and the fracturing of Russia. They occupy rightful Russian lands and are unmatched and they're arrogant and yet it cannot be denied that they are a world leader in technology. The Japanese are especially adept in the area of aviation. Though it would be easier to turn our noses up at the Japanese and their technology, for now we must swallow our pride and study the designs of the jet aircraft for the good of the Federation. We get quite a few bonuses, industries, industrial bonuses for that. That's pretty good. More artillery. More soft attack. Look at that PP. Wow! Wow! Port Wheat Farms, yes please. Sabotage Phoenix. Yes. Grow economically closer. Eh, we're kind of okay. Now do scientific research. Wow, that really was really good actually to get for us. Um, let's do this one just because I don't know. We're 63% stability. I don't know how much more we can get though. 63% stability. Siberian air fleet, good. Decrease sphere influence, increase sphere influence. Decrease all of end influence. Increases, no, decreases strength of loyalty. There we go. Maybe try that one. Inspect Japanese jets, followed up with. Realize Kamov's designs. Engineer Nikolai Kamov has designed some of the most impressive aircraft ever seen, unfortunately, unrealized because of the complexity. Now that our control of Siberia is secure, it's time to put those bold plans to fruition and start producing those flying machines. The factories of Nova Siberia will start assembling Kamov's model of a coaxial rotor utility helicopter. Unlike anything our enemies have, this fast mobile transport will give our troops a cutting edge in the battlefield. Well, if we actually use it, that'd be pretty good. Uh, yes, go into that one. Sabotage Phoenix. Decrease OF and influence probably again. Um, so we have something else down here. Nope, that's fine. Increased influence. Sure, why not? Where are we at with this? 96, 100? That's pretty darn good. Look at that. Ah, they have no loyalty, no power, but they are irrelevant. Realize Gamelov's designs. Very good. Anything else? Uh, expand the state welfare programs? Yes, please. But a central de design bureau. Research of new and improved technologies and designs to implement them for practical use are critical to the advancement of our state, but both have a certain risk to them. Left to uncontrolled and undirected, research and design can easily become useless or even counterproductive. To protect against this and ensure efficient and coordinated scientific work, we will establish a central design bureau responsible for oversight of all practical research, the design of new technologies, and the organization of all scientific efforts. Which sounds pretty good to me. Oh, there goes Sweden. Oh, they actually went to World Sweden. Well, look at that. Yes, more po better poverty. Oh, build ports, build factories. Not bad. Oh, Jesus. Okay, we're really running out of things here. Um, do that, I guess. Yeah, here. Every state needs a radar station. There you go. Um, before you do that, make sure at least you got that stuff there and that stuff there and then that stuff there and that stuff. There you go. And when you run out of things to do, here, just build more air bases because we are actually running out of things to build. And then after that, let's go do this one. Yes, please. The future's here. Anything else here? Not really too much. 85 and 85. Which one is, uh... If both our influences are equal number, we are unable to... Just, oh, crap. That's not good. Uh, how much longer do we have? Oh, we have one day. Okay, no, no. 70, okay, that's good. 73 days. That's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, well, I got a little worried there. Um... Wartime industry is pretty good, though. Increase sphere influence. Yes, please. Now nice, we're doing with the land doctrine, which is very, very good. Gets more land, not attack. And then we'll go straight for 1966 weapon improvements. 10% more soft attack is pretty good. Pretty darn good, I'd say. Uh, 
main battle tank, IFBs, Kalashnikov. Innovate on the Kalashnikov. The Kalashnikov assault rifles become the gold standard for fighting in Russia, which, with each relevant contender for dominance, fielding hundreds of Kalashnikov's models for their armies, either as Zotaus originals or made local local made copies. Despite its effectiveness and popularity, it is not a machine without flaws. Our engineers are promoting a series of improvements to the assault rifle, planning to make it lighter and more reliable with aims to give our mobile troops the edge they need. The future is now. Today marks the opening of a newly centralized design bureau, creatively named the Central Design Bureau, and Akademogorodok, a relatively recently founded scientific center in the city of Novosibirsk, full of places of immense knowledge and learning, as well as great institutes of incredible scientific design, established due to the inefficiencies present in past research efforts. The CDB is meant to give scientific study greater organization and coordination under federal oversight, allowing it to truly prosper without unnecessary overlap or competition between scientists. Problems present present and past under the previous decentralized nature of the research in Novosibirsk. Now that it's been open, research and design within the Federation will in progress at a much more rapid pace, uh, allowing us to close the technological gap with the rest of the world and even innovate, creating new technologies in various fields ourselves. This is a great victory not only for the Federation, but all of Russia for, and for Russian science. Oh, look at this. Research and development. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. The results of this project were by Chevatel. Huh, wow. As much as I want to invest in that, I, we got to do this. How is it 100? How? We have 45 days. How long will that take? 15 days. Can we get that much political power? Oh, we might be able to. Yeah, we actually might be able to. I want to get up to here first. Yeah, we're not... Oh my god, are you kidding me? No, I don't want to trade with OF, man. I want the Japanese. God, America, CIA. Stop it, stop it, CIA. Stop it. Come on. Innovate on the Kalashnikov quickly and then do this one. I think of Sweden though. Nice. Come on. Give us that PP. There you go. It's not gonna be enough. Now, actually 95 is not bad. If you'd like to read about better research facilities, please go right ahead. Get back to the schools eventually. And I suppose academic base, if you like to read that, please go, right, please go right ahead. Central Design Bureau, very nice. But a Siberian main battle tank. In a similar vein to our motor, uh, motorized vehicles, our main battle tanks are also a weak point for a military. The vast majority of them are either over a decade old at this point, or just the scraps of the Japanese or mil mil American military handed out to some warlords we conquered. This is a state of affairs we can no longer continue. The fact of the matter is, modern warfare is synonymous with armored warfare, and if we find ourselves unable to domestically produce armored vehicle fighting vehicles when the time comes to bear our arms against Germany, we will lose. Investing a small portion of our budget towards developing sufficient armor technology is now securing a our future later on. And we are now out of manpower. God dang it. But I guess it is time to do this. Main battle tanks. Remove that. Remove these two, actually. That would be good. And add on motorized infantry there. There you go. That's a little better. Tanks. Lo loads of tanks. Tanks, 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 tanks. We're not going to have enough tanks. But this is really for the WFFR, so... Because I'm pretty sure they'll unite. Oh. Actually, you know what? Do that one. 20 combo width. Not too bad. 20 billion. My goodness. We do have 17 divisions, though. That's pretty nice. Go and train if we need it, though. Agadilla. Cool. We have to keep spending because we need more political power, but infantry support vehicle designs. Modern warfare requires vehicles that are both capable and reliable, operating across vast distances and in the harsh climate of Siberia. We become well accustomed in what makes an effective vehicle. Despite that, we remain dependent on foreign and pre-war vehicles for almost all of our needs. Not only are these foreign goods of dubious quality when they arrive here, they're often most not suited for the demands we place on them. We will, therefore, design new domestic vehicles specifically for our needs in this demanding environment and in doing so ensure our army's effectiveness and viability. Are you kidding me? Recent wranglings between Phoenix and Sibir have done more damage to our economy. Our economic situation grows more shaky by every day, and if we don't take swift action, the decay will only worsen. Money grows tighter and our workers more angry. The reaper of our economic depression raises his scythe. Wait, what? Okay, so I'm gonna go back and okay, so off screen, I'm gonna make I'm gonna really make sure that we don't go with the elephant. Or at least not have an equal number here. That is stupid, but I'm going to end it here and fix it off screen. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will strike out against the Far East and maybe even into the western parts of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.